Okay, five, four, three. We're back on Star Talk Cosmic Queries Edition. Grab bag questions that came to us from all over the internet. All over the internet. All, and this is the final segment. Yes. Oh, so, of course, see, being this final segment, this has to be our lightning it round. It is the lightning round. We're, we're going to pack in as many answers as I can. That's right. That's go right. for it. Here we go. All let's, right. uh, let's start off with Steve Kramer, this one from Facebook. In space, no one can hear you scream, but you can hear yourself. A friend and I have actually conflicting views on this. We know that there is no air to allow your voice to reach your ears, but he brought up bone conduction that might be able to get a hum of scream. Okay? I told him to change the pressure would force all the air out so you wouldn't happen. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not what I think. It's just what the laws of physics are. Okay, what right. are those laws so of physics? So, you need air to move sound from you to the other person. Correct. But air is just a thing that vibrates. Your body is a vibratory medium, and especially the rigid objects such as your teeth and your bones. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you, like, you can so hear that. In fact, you might even be able to hear your heartbeat. So definitely you can hear your own body uh, uh, digestive uh, and mouth functions in space. Sweet, <laughs> sweet. All right, let's move on. This is from Michael Shambo. Michael says, I just finished reading Space Chronicles and it was an absolute delight. Thank you, Neil. You can say you're welcome. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. My question is, if birds or any other animal capable of flight never existed on planet Earth, but the rest of the world didn't change as we know it, would humans have ever developed a need or a want to fly? Or would it have just taken us more time to have that need? It, <laughs> as it was, it took us a long time <laughs> to fly. We didn't fly until 110 years ago. So, and we've been around for thousands of years. So, the existence of birds apparently didn't speed up that process. Right. All right. So, uh, I think we still would have flown. We have really clever folks out there. We would have seen paper flutter to the ground. We exactly. probably would have invented a glider. It might have taken a little longer, but I so think we would have been up there flying and uh, been on the moon. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. This is from Anthony Combs. What implications does the recent discovery of recorded temperatures lower than absolute zero have on science? Most particular, the implication that I'm seeing on the interwebs about how it exhibits properties of dark matter. This is a fascinating question. Right. I read the research paper that talked about temperatures below absolute zero, and I didn't understand the word. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I cannot answer that. But if you... But generally speaking, when you go to when you take matter to a state it's never been in, mm -hmm. when you explore the universe on energies never reached, mm -hmm. new things rise up and new explanations for previously held uh, long-standing uh, points of ignorance are sometimes solved. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can all be hopeful uh, that people are finding new ways to take matter. So let's go. Sweet, I like the answer. Uh, Caroline Kello. This is what she says. On an episode of Doctor Who, parts of the universe exploded due to a very complicated string of events, and the stars exploded. That got me thinking. How would this affect us? If there were suddenly no more stars, excluding the sun, there still was a sun in the episode. What would the consequences be? Okay, so in other words, what she's asking is, nothing but our solar system. All right. What would the consequences be? What's the so consequences of nothing but our solar system? Okay. There'd be no consequences whatsoever. <laughs> Next question. Okay. <laughs> you wouldn't have Neil Young's song, The Southern Cross. What's that song? Is it he the one sings it? There'd be, we'd be missing songs right. in the repertoire. All right? There'd be the Stardust Memories. Hey. We, they, right? Hey, we'd yeah. be, they don't, so all right. pretty much a lot of art would go a away. A lot of art would, a lot go, of art away. would go away. It would be, I think, a, a little bit culturally impoverished, but right. we'd still, be, we'd still be fine. Nice. Okay, this is from Derek. Derek wants to be a In other words, the distant stars have no meaningful effect on anything we do in our everyday life. Boom. Go. Derek, I've recently started watching Doctor Who, another Doctor Who question, and every now and then, or more to be, to be more accurate, every episode, they have some freaky science phenomenon which makes me scoff at the television. Without spoiling anything, in one episode, Doctor Who's spaceship, which is a police box, tugs the planet Earth back into its regular place in the solar system after it was stolen and dumped in a void in the universe. 
This leads me to my question. Thank God. What would happen to a planet that somehow was being tugged throughout the universe? And is it possible to calculate how much force would be necessary to pull that planet? Uh, yes, and by the way, a police box could tow a planet. The doctor's police box can tow a planet because, of course, the police box is bigger on the inside. That's right. When you're that, then you can have any mass it wants and any power. Just let the man have his day. Because it's right. interdimensional. It's, and let the man have his day. That's right. But otherwise, we will surely have to learn how to start towing planets when the sun becomes a red giant because it will expand. And if we don't move out behind farther away from the sun, we will incinerate as the oceans come to a rolling boil and evaporates into the atmosphere. And the apparate, atmosphere evaporates into space. And we are a charred ember burning deep within the gaseous envelope of the sun. Mm -hmm. We will want to live farther away from the sun. When that happens, we better figure out how to tow. Happy thoughts. Okay. Happy <laughs> thoughts. Real quick. Go. Jerry Taylor. Go. I, I know nothing about astronomy, but it, but it doesn't make sense. The most distant galaxy that we say we're looking back 13 million years at the beginning of the Big Bang. Basically, how can we say that? How can we say that? First, there's 13 billion light... 13 billion years ago because it's taken light that long to reach us. That's how far away the damn thing is. Chuck, I don't see you as you are, but as you once were, three, bil three billionths of a second ago. I've changed. In the past. So the farther away you are, the more you see into its past. It's that simple. Boom! No, actually, I missed a, a bell from the previous one. There Boom. you go. We have ended Star Talk, <laughs> the lightning round, the Cosmic Queries edition. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. Chuck Knights, nice. thanks for being here. It's a pleasure. We brought you in part by a grant from the National Science Foundation. As always, keep looking up. Man. Man, that was a lot. Man, a lot of stuff. That was a lot of stuff. That was a lot. That's interesting because most radio is a little more stately than that, now that I think about it. Just let's talk. How do you feel about Obama? Right, what right, do you right. think? Oh, well, I did some research and I think he's this. And we're just blowing through the universe. This That's is cool. like unique radio, I think. It, it, it is, because it's literally, like I said, anytime you can go from <laughs> meteor showers <laughs> like to Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> you, you're doing something right. You know?